and I'm gonna let you know it might get physical, so you might have to set them camera down and start swinging. Is that dude sleeping on rocks? There's somebody in there. Dude, that's like five feet. There's there. It's five feet away from the police department on the corner. That's literally a pile of shit there. That's poop. That, like, they're like, oh. He's through that. All the way to 2008. All right, guys, part two of Prepared. We got a lot of things to talk about. We actually are with a local Los Angeles police officer who did not want to be put on camera. We convinced him to be put on camera as far as uh, concealing, his, uh, concealing his identity and also masking his voice. I get it, the politics that are involved. He doesn't want to lose his job. We talk about a lot of things that police officers are talking about and they're facing as a challenge being defunded. We also take a tour of Skid Row and a lot of that content that we filmed is not appropriate for YouTube. We'll get immediately demonetized and suppressed. So we transition a lot of that to patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover. Ultimately, guys, what you're going to see is a lot of things that um, breaks my heart as an American. You know, I've been to Africa, I've been to Yemen, I've been all over the world, and I've seen poverty and how it affects people and homelessness. But most of the reasons these people are homeless is because they are addicted to drugs and they can't get off the streets without help, comprehensive help. While a lot of people have commented, who cares, that's what Cali gets, um, that's what they get for what they, who they voted in, there's also a lot of corruption and a lot of lack of empathy from fellow Americans. Guys, I'm, I'm an American first, right? I, my, my mom and her entire family, six sisters, my grandmother, all came over here from a, a foreign country and made a life for themselves. They worked hard, they supported one another, and they got through those difficult circumstances because of that support they had. They had love, empathy, first. We don't have a lot of that, I, I feel like, left in this country. And so when we see these people, I saw this uh, gentleman um, literally with his ass hanging out, vomiting and, and sitting in his own feces. Like, a lot of people look at that and they laugh. There's nothing funny about that stuff. It's serious stuff that we need to get a hold of that we need to come up with solutions, and most certainly, we need to be speaking of the truth. That's why this episode is so important to me, because a lot of people don't know the truth. And when a police officer has the personal courage to get out there and tell the truth after being on the job nearly a decade, that's super impactful. Those are the stories we need to be telling, not manipulating the data because we want to present a better case when the reality is people are suffering. For you, who's been on the job nearly a decade, you've seen a lot of changes. And fundamentally, kind of what I keep asking is like, what definitively changed things? Because even from the time that I was here a decade ago and I started my company, Philcraft Survival in, in NorCal, uh -huh. things in my period of time, just living in Cali for a couple of years, were changing dramatically. What can you point your finger to one thing specifically that really changed? Prop forty seven. Really? That changed. Prop forty seven. That's that's kinda like you know, when you open the gateway to hell, for me what I saw is that just changed it. We used to be able to clean up the streets. If citizens called us and said, Hey, you know, we got all these like homeless people here, people doing drugs, we can clean it up, we can go there and using controlled substances still, still used to be a felony. And so if we went up to someone and they're like, say they're taking a shit on somebody's lawn, right? And we go there, you know, how do we solve like that issue, right? Because that's going to be a quality of life issue. Yeah. So we'd go there and if the guy's all, if the guy's all coked out and he's at the state where he's going to go and, and take a shit on somebody's lawn already, then obviously this guy has a drug addiction problem most of the time. Yeah. So. We can go there, see if he has possession of meth, cocaine, whatever. It's a felony. We could arrest him. He'd get booked. We, we'd force him into rehab. Clean this guy up. Yeah. Okay. We can't do that anymore. Because of Prop 47. They re, um, reclassified all these crimes 
And so now the narcotics is a misdemeanor. And in the state of California, if a misdemeanor is committed outside of your presence, we can't arrest for that. So, I mean, there are certain exemptions like domestic violence, child abuse type of stuff. But in general, then, if it's a misdemeanor that is committed out of our presence, we can't arrest for that. What's up, guys? Uh, you mind if I, I'm doing like a little thing, interviewing people, like the outreach? Can I talk to somebody about what you guys are doing? Mike. Yeah. Mike. What's up, Mike? How you doing? Uh, my name's Mike as well. Okay. I was just going to see if I could interview you guys for to oh, talk we about. Do, we don't do interviews. Oh, okay, I just want to, you guys are a 501c3, right? Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're urban alcohol, but we don't do the interviews. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Do you know why you guys don't do that, just out of curiosity? Uh, a policy? Yes, sir. Okay. But it's called Urban Alchemy. Okay. What I was surprised by is like, I mean, ur Urban Alchemy, that's poop. That Like they're like doing water and coffee for the public. But when it comes to like outreach, they're just doing a job, I get it. But it's like really standoffish about talking about what they do. He okay? He's okay, but uh, he's more than okay. He has, uh, yeah. well, he's, he's, yeah, I mean, oh, there, yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. I don't mind if you film live, but uh, yeah. I'm I'm organizing, I'm doing inventory. Yeah. And I don't Are those a, Bibles? Yes, yes. And yeah. I'm reading, uh, and may I, may I ask what is your name? Uh, Mike, Miguel. Mike, Miguel, okay. Yeah. Like Mikel and also like Michael the Archangel. Yes. So and this is for a study, just basic. Uh, um, I seen my friends are being sometimes interviewed by prestigious companies such as Nat Geo, yeah. National Geographic, and then I go there because of the struggle. Yeah. Or the or the turbulence, you know, something happens that if they if if they stay con with the with the, it's, it's like I have a, a, a like a black hole, nobody's a galaxy that drafts you because I saw you there are evil people that want to uh, kind of like get them into getting money for you yeah. for free. Yeah. And I'm like, no, like uh, we don't give money for free. Like yeah, you yeah. work, you got to work. You yeah, know? yeah. So where are you from? I'm, f I'm from here, Los Angeles County. Yeah. Uh, proud to say we we are the considered the number one in many things and uh, my, I know that when I was a lot of the information that is for my mom so I see the same patterns and that's why I'm here because we're solving the struggle it's like the voices are not hallucination they're not mental diseases or disorders because it is being said that there is no disease that can last for more than a hundred years right so I'm gonna write this is yeah so this is Matthew and I'm doing it they want to hear this I'm here because over there I kind of did my homework for, throughout the entire county I did my my own research so I had a budget of three months but then uh, I couldn't solve it I thought it was gonna take only like two because I know that that's great but Help is like, uh, you need help too. Yeah, of course. I need help. All of you us. need help. You need help, you need help. He needs help like. I was waiting for him to say something coherent, but he just couldn't. He just couldn't put it together. What's up? Huh? We're just filming the documentary. I'm sorry to see this, which, what's going on here. Can I talk to you about that? What's going on? Audio only? We're actually, we're actually doing a documentary on the situation so we can help people. Can I talk to you about it? You just might want to ask some people down here before you guys do that. We did, we already did. Some people, all right, all right, well, just make sure. That's why that patrol car is sitting right there. You guys look like cops, but all right. Yeah, like, do I look like a cop? Patrol car is following you? Huh? Patrol car is following you? Yeah. Okay, well have a good day, sorry. Yeah, that's all right, you, you ain't doing anything. It's like, you can't talk to anybody because everybody's so volatile in the nature of the situation. It's like, oh, you're a cop. It's like, no, I'm not, I'm not actually a cop. It's like, it, it, and if I was, no, there's no, there's nobody to talk to because you can't talk to anybody because they seem like they don't trust, trust anything. And I see it like when society fails you, when you feel like society's failed you.
What's up, man? My name's Mike. Can I ask you questions about what's going on down here? I, I don't want to intrude on what's, what you got, but you seem like you, you're squared away. And I'm doing a little mini documentary on asking people like, hey, what? Excuse me. You haven't, you haven't got my permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I apologize. But like, like your life story and, and kind of some of the things that you've gone through. You got a card or something? Yeah, yeah. I, we don't, I don't have a business card on me, but. Okay. So what happened? Um, I deal with this woman every day, right? Yeah. And and. Do you mind if I catch this on audio? No, it's but, all good. All right. Um, please, just kind of a high spot. Walk with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We're right. We have we're with with you, you. We just got out. Of, it's like physical confrontation that just just now just happened. Yeah. And so I'm gonna document it because, and I'm gonna let you know, it might get physical. So you might have to set the camera down and start swinging. You. So right? you're a former marine. So you you went through the prison system to go through Marine Corps boot camp and everything else, right? Yes. How was that for you? Did it improve your life or your situation? Um, I'll tell you this. It's helped me survive on the streets, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to tell you this. Um, I've been out here on the streets five years, and I'm weathered like a Navy SEAL. Yeah. Um, the weathering um, the, the weathering thing, five years on the streets, and I'm just now starting Bro, that's to like that's like a 1,000 combat deployments. I mean, that's like a serious that's, life. That's what they say. Yeah, it is, 100%. That's what they say. Some, you know, somebody else told me that. I did nine combat deployments five to Iraq, a couple to Afghanistan, and all over the world. Let and I see you. this stuff, and I'm like, it, well, it's a different this. world, man. Now, Afghanistan is a very spiritual place. It's beautiful, man. And, the most and, beautiful and, place and I've ever been. And, and you, know, you, know, you, know, you know Afghanistan means? You know what Afghanistan means? What is it? it see, that's the thing. And this don't take this the wrong way, right? I won't, and, I won't. And I said this to my business partner. You go someplace, and you, and you point your guns at the person's in the direction. You don't even understand what their country means. The culture. The place. No, not right. even the culture. Do you know that Afghanistan means the city of Los Angeles? No, that I didn't th know that. That, Los, that Los, Angeles, Los Angeles is the twin city to Afghanistan. I didn't know that. Yes, you can Google that. Yeah, I'll look it up. Okay. That's beautiful, man. Now, this woman, she got something to say to me. You might record me whooping somebody's ass, too. So what happened? Like, I mean, what man, was the beef I, over? The beef was over, in fact, the beef was over this. The beef is over the fact that this woman might maybe needs to retire, yeah. get out of the business. Or is maybe, she a person that managing the help for people? Um, like she, what's she, she doing? She she's the lady that runs the cash register. Okay. She holds my food stamp card because I'm homeless and yeah. I lose my car. Yeah. So if I go to her and I order a burrito, you know what I'm saying? I might yeah. ask her for five dollars. I might have some person to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. On the wrong. Yeah. Well today I go in there, I wanted to buy a pair of shoes. Yeah. Because my feet were hurting. Yeah. And those get are nice, those are brand eat. new, yeah whole thing is something to drink. The whole thing of it is, is she's confrontational about the whole situation. She keeps wanting to call people on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. having, I'm having problems with these Hispanics down here. Yeah. And it's not so much the Hispanics, it's just their whole thing. And my whole thing, man, is is because of my training. It's and respect. Because, listen, exactly. Because yeah. of my training and my background, yeah. that I feel like people are trying to test me. Yeah. You understand what I'm 100%, saying? 100%. I know that. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically yeah. what we're about you to do. you got to build respect before anything yeah. else. So I'm asking you guys, if you go with me, that if we go over there, go in a situation like that, we might have to get them up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. What's the problem, man? Oh, she was just telling us to leave. Telling oh, me to leave. She was telling us to leave. Why do you have to leave, man? That's all right. Just hold it. Hold it. See, that's, the, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the problem? Why is that a for even us know. to do that? It's what all right. What is the problem? What gives know, her the right to have anything to say about that? Yeah. And people do it all the time. Yeah. People yeah. do it all the time. Yeah, we see agree about that, though. So I don't so, want to see you get in a fight, though. I don't want to. I'm not going to get into a fight. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to get into a fight. Yeah. Because I, I live here every day, just like she here. She works here every day. Yeah. Every day we see each other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How did you end up on the streets after five? I mean, you said five years. Yeah. How did you end up on the streets? I ended up on the streets because I was disenfranchised. Yeah. Um, by disenfranchised, I have a corporation yeah. that I haven't been allotted the information to get a hold of my corporation. Yeah. Um, my lawyers and such. So what did been, you do? What did so, you do? So in the meanwhile, while this is going on, yeah. I have people like this, these people right here yeah. undermining myself. See how she's, this is harassment. Yeah, don't worry about that. No, I have to worry about yeah, it yeah. because I go to prison for shit. I get it. I've been it. to prison nine times. Yeah. How many, how many, how many, how many departments did you do? Nine. Yeah. I've been to prison nine times. Wow, man. Okay. You see yeah. what I'm saying? That's crazy. And my thing is, I'm not scared to go to prison. I'm not yeah, scared yeah. to die. So what's the problem? Yeah, when you when you when you say things like that, like not scared to die, not scared to go to prison. Are you scared to die or scared but, to go but, to prison? But why is that? Like you, uh, no, you can let me have ask a, you. Are you scared? No, to, I'm not. Okay, so yeah. so so ask. But yourself, I don't want to go to so, prison. So, so ask yourself that question. Yeah. Ask yourself. Ask yourself that question. Yeah. Am I scared to die? Am I scared to go to prison? I don't want to go to prison because I have a family. I have kids. The bottom line is, I'm trying to figure out 
why gentlemen, healthy, and and guys like you who have been in the prison system, how you want to live a, a normal life? How do you get back to living a normal life? Or you is know, this your you new know, norm? You know how you have to do it? Yeah. When you get into incidents like what I'm, what I'm about to go over here and handle, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you get into instances like that, you'll be able to brush it off and move on yeah. and, and, and get to the bottom line Makes of you more situation. resilient. Makes you get more Get to resilient. the bottom line of the situation. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So my whole thing is, you know, um, I give respect. I want respect. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? And she's not giving you the respect you deserve, you feel like. That's why there's a confrontation between you and her. What do you think? I think that's you it. You asked that question. You asked the question. Yeah, I, I think it's because you're you don't feel respected. Yeah. All so, right, let's go. You want, you want let's go. Oh, is he gonna is he gonna die? Yeah. All right, just cut it. I was in shock when I saw all the things that were happening, and a lot of the things we couldn't show on camera. Um, we almost got in fights. We stepped in a lot of feces. Uh, there's a lot of things that went down that we just didn't show. The stories we heard, some of them aren't even appropriate for Patreon. Like, I, I'm not gonna tell you stories that I heard from police officers regarding uh, children. Um, it's just not appropriate to talk about, but let's just say the worst of society are not being held accountable because of a lot of this policy. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. The Phil Krause Survival app has a lot of the content that we have uh, in details. Um, and most certainly on patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover. I'm headed off to Bozeman, Montana with John. We're going to film some segments looking at our, a new piece of land where Phil Krause survival will be in the near future outside of Bozeman, Montana. This is a collaboration with ex Overland and Clay Croft and his family. Uh, we're super proud and honored to be part of that endeavor because we get to teach mobility, uh, recovery, tactical courses, first aid, all the things that we do and even bringing to you um, in a partnership our first Phil Craft Survival Expo that will include tactical hunting, overlanding, all the things that we talk about in survival. Um, yeah, man, we got a lot going on. Um, we're getting into the holidays. I want you guys to understand that the things that we're doing in Prepared is to inform you, educate you, and also give you the best information um, and best recommendations for fixing problems. Where do we fix these? We talk about that in the Mike Force podcast. Make sure you hit that up on YouTube and wherever podcasts are found. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Until next time.